Um, season four, what can you tell us about Quentin, where he's at, his alter ego? Quentin doesn't exist. <laughs> Brian is his name. His name is Brian. I like to call him Brian Guy. He's a son of his position. <laughs> um, it's fun. Um, it, 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 from an acting perspective, uh, it, it's, it's a, we're doing sort of like a hard reboot. Uh, we get to see these people experiencing magic all over again, um, but from a brand new perspective. I think Quentin came at it uh, with a lot of skepticism and uh, was sort of perpetually disappointed with what he found uh, magic to be. I think because it's he was someone who suffered, felt like he was suffering in his life and wanted a quick fix and imagined that magic could do that um, and it was something that he always fantasized about and then when it actually came true it wasn't as there, even, there are no quick fixes in life even with magic and learned that it um, uh, wasn't going to fulfill him in the ways that he needed it to and so I think uh, it's a complicated relationship with him Brian's relationship with him just on the other hand uh, I don't think he's someone who ever really been thought about magic. I think never he like read the fillery books. Huh? Never read the fillery never books. Never the fillery books. I think maybe he read like half of the first Lord of the Rings book and he was like, it just talks about leaves and grass so much. I just can't take it anymore. Elves? What? Um, uh, and then it's like thrust into the clutches of this evil monster uh, with sort of like an insatiable appetite for, for blood um, and carnage uh, and is learning magic from that perspective <laughs> I think it's a little bit more wide-eyed um, and shocking I don't remember what the question was <laughs> it was about who Brian is as a character I think that is but that pretty much answers it. Cool. <laughs> uh, so she's had a lot of different kinds of like, romantic adventures. We talked with Olivia. I am trying to have to this season one, Hugh and Alice together. Um, and I was wondering, do you feel the same way? Are you hoping Quinn has uh, more like love adventures or relationships? Do you want to go back to Alice? Do you have a ship for Q? Is what I'm asking. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I stopped you, I'm so sorry. You know, it's, it's, so so, it's just so complicated. It's like, I think he's on a solo journey for me. Um, I think he's been spending a lot of time learning about himself. Uh, you know, this is a person who now we find has the emotional wisdom of someone who is 120 years old, you know, after after the episode where he lives a full life. Uh, that's something that uh, they remember to an extent. Um, uh, maybe not vividly, but I think it, it lives in here. Um, because of that, he's a very different person than when he started. And Alice, I think, has gone through an equally... Uh, complicated journey. I think they're intrinsically tied to each other in the same way that um, uh, Quentin and, and Elliot are. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find out how nice our friends are. How we love them. How we love them. How we love them. How we love them. Yeah, that's where I'm at with him. We'll see what the writers for at is. <laughs> so one of the things the series does so well, even though it's a fantasy show, is tackling mental illness. Yeah. How, as an actor, do you prepare for those scenes? It's something that I take very seriously. Um, it's something that I always fear being flippant about. It's a conversation that I don't think we have enough. And so... 
because we don't have it enough, it's delicate. I, uh, I, I just try to do my best to make it as important. Reunited. I have my own. Do you want some? Yeah. <laughs> mm, sorry, we're having a an important conversation. I hope it's not better. I'm leaving. Really? I don't know. I have one more to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, all right. So. Is your wife aware of this relationship? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're very secure. <laughs> So you take mental health issues very seriously? I do take I do take it very seriously. It's something that I put a lot of focus on too. It's something that I think we as a cast were drawn to this story for. Um, it's something that I think the books talks about in in a in a way that I'd really never experienced fantasy approaching. Um, and I think it's a nuanced perspective. And um, it's rewarding to come to Comic Con and to interact with the fans because so often we're up in Vancouver making a show about magic and it can feel flippant and silly. And it's nice to know that when we come back here, uh, last year we were in a hall of 2,000 people, 2,000 strangers, and 90% of the people who wanted to come up and ask questions wanted to talk about their own experiences with depression and, and anxiety and sexual assault. And to be a part of something that in a room full of strangers, your innermost demons or, or struggles are on the tip of your tongue is pretty profound. And it's, um, it's nice to know as an artist that the things that we are fighting for are coming across. And then, and then, and then it's worthwhile at all. That said, is there anything fun in that season? <laughs> <laughs> light <Not> moments? <laughs> I'm less drawn to the light moments. Um, there is a, there's a fair amount of physical comedy coming your way from me in one of the first episodes. Um, and it's all like, <laughs> yeah, like a lot of like you know like falling and choking, and, you know like it's a it's a series of unfortunate events for for uh, whoever this character is. <laughs> Tone-wise, when we think about this season compared to the others, we're really we're like right at the beginning, you know. Yeah. Um, the tone of the show is kind of like all over the place, uh, in a in an exciting way. Um, sometimes it's a drama, and sometimes it's a comedy, and, and sometimes it's both, and sometimes it's a musical, and sometimes it's a mystery, and sometimes it's an adventure, and sometimes it's a thriller. You know, like that kind of stuff. The, uh, the writers have provided themselves a lot of freedom to explore a lot of different. Um, this season so far, we're a little, in a little bit of like horror. I spend ninety percent of what we've shot so far covered in blood, um, and so that you know, <laughs> sticky. <laughs> Is it your own blood or something? Else? I can't say. Um, oh dear. So, what is it like playing scenes against Hale, given the history between Quentin and Elliot, and now Elliot is, you know, a monster? Supposing we're in a world where Quentin comes back, uh, and he someone were to remember those sorts of things, <laughs> I would imagine that, that it would be difficult, that and that someone might devote their lives to trying to get their friend back. Thanks guys, appreciate it.